Hello, welcome everyone. And for those who joined us yesterday, welcome back. It is great to see you. I'm Lola, I am your host, and I am joined here today by Shanid, who is an amazing brand designer. And we have been working on the brand identity for a very futuristic and fun beauty company. And so we are now on day two of that um, activity. So Shanid will tell us more about what we're working on in just a minute. But we have an artist spotlight today, so make sure you stay tuned for that later in the stream. And then is uh, as people are rolling in, if you miss the stream before ours, make sure you check out the new Illustrator Creative Challenge. It's hosted by Andrew from 11.30 a.m. Pacific time to 12 p.m. Pacific time. So do tune in and make sure you challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. So let us go ahead and see who is tuning in with us today. Um, so I know you're here, go ahead and drop in the chat what your drink or snack of choice is while creating. So I can see who all is here. Um, and if you are tuning in from YouTube, hop on over to Behance so we can see your messages. The link is b.net slash Adobe live. And Shanid, what is your favorite snack or drink of choice? Um, I'm quite simple. I do like a crisp, like a salt and nice. vinegar crisp. What about you? I am not a huge like snacker, but I'm a huge drink person. So usually matcha or like a sparkling water, or I almost always have juice in my fridge. So love all of the drinks. Yeah. And you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, are you one of those people that has like three drinks on their desk? Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like you guys don't have a, a great view of my kitchen, but on my counter, there's like a million <laughs> drinks <laughs> back there. Um, so absolutely. But I'm seeing lots of friends rolling in. Hi, Val. I see Adnan, Tiana, Mwendo is back. Welcome back. And Paloma, welcome back. I remember from yesterday and... Yes, I'm seeing kombucha, coffee, cup of tea, lovely. Coffee, yes, some of you are very like energetic, creative <laughs> workers. I like the cup of tea because you might be a little bit more relaxed while you create. Umacorn says water and something cold and then switch it up with mm -hmm. a latte. Robert says he goes through about three energy drinks. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, amazing. Well, welcome everyone. We're super excited to dive in. I'm gonna pass it over to Shanid. Um, so for those just tuning in for the first time today, can you just briefly reintroduce yourself and then tell us what we completed yesterday and what we what we have planned for today? Yeah, perfect. So I'm Sinead Taylor. Um, I'm a brand designer um, currently based in Ireland. I started my business um, during the pandemic after graduating. And I create a lot of brands for Gen, Gen Z and millennial and kind of redefining industries that are maybe a bit more traditional. Um, yesterday, we worked mainly in Illustrator. And what we were looking at is creating a beauty brand um, for Gen Z. It was an SPF and foundation duo. Um, we kind of worked on the mood board, uh, the color palette, the typography, the logo. And then we also began to kind of translate that onto some of the packaging and began to think about um, kind of assets, so little stickers that might go on Instagram posts. Um, today, what we will be doing is working in XD. And in XD, what we're planning on doing today is to make some social media posts for Instagram. So how would base look like on social media? We'll also then be creating some presentation slides for the client because the Illustrator file looks kind of all over the place and it's kind of thinking about how can um, the client understand it and give feedback as well. So that's what we're going to be doing in XD today. I'll also be creating some mock-ups in XD as well if you find you don't like, you, you want a variety of real life and also maybe more graphical things as well. So to start, I think we will go into the Instagram posts. So what I like to do usually with my client is to think about kind of the things they want to create on Instagram. I usually make templates 
which means that I will build it and then they get them at the end and they can constantly edit them. So trying to think of common things that they will have on their Instagram. So for base, I think initially a product showcase because it's a new um, product on the market. People want to see the actual product. Um, I'm also going to do a carousel post. So maybe some information, maybe the benefits of SPF because um, we know that maybe Generation Z um, find it a little bit boring maybe to wear SPF or don't really see the benefit of it. Um, also maybe a quote post adding in a little bit more of a playful and humanistic nature something which generation z really value and mm -hmm. um, they like to see the human kind of aspect of a brand and then also a testimonial because it's a product people do want to see whether it is working and if it actually is worth the money or the shout so what we will do is i will start up here and the thing i really like about xd is it's really simple for your clients and it's really um geared towards kind of social media i find so when you're clicking on your artboard on like illustrator which you just kind of shape it it has like a4 a3 um xd will actually have sizes for google pixel samples so like phone makes um, you can see they also have, if you're, a lot of people build um, their kind of mock-ups for their website on this. So you can see there's web and then here we have social media. So we have Instagram story, Instagram post, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. So all we have to do is click on the Instagram post to get the square format. And obviously you still can um, resize that to whatever you want. But just for this, it makes it a lot easier to already have it there. You can also rename this as well. So Instagram post one, we know that we're going to be doing, I'll just bring this up to make it a little easier to remember. So I'll just paste that there like that. So we're going to be doing, first of all, a product showcase. So I'm just going to type that in. And that also helps as well when you're sharing it with your client, they know, okay, that's a product showcase. Or if they want to duplicate it, copy and paste it, they can keep track of it. So what we're going to do is copy and paste over the packaging here that we done yesterday. So we have the SPF, the step one. And then the step two is the foundation and it can be bought in a duo. So the great thing about working across Illustrator and XD is you can kind of copy and paste things. If you find it that it doesn't work as well, sometimes I just export it as maybe a JPEG or a PNG um, from Illustrator and then just drag it in like that. So it is just a matter of kind of playing around. And like we mentioned yesterday as well, when in Illustrator, I had saved my colors in the library section. And like we mentioned, that will then also go over to XD as well. So if I click on base, I have all my colors already there waiting for me to use, which makes things a lot easier um, when creating kind of assets and things like that. So I'm just going to play around firstly with kind of the background colors and what kind of looks best for the product showcase. I'll also bring over the other one to make sure that the color goes well with both of them. Like that. And sometimes in XD, the color can show up a little brighter um, when you're working in it, but when it exports, it's usually fine. So yeah. I'm just gonna play How many on. templates do you usually give clients like in one package? Um, in the, the kind of foundational, it would be five. I think it's always a good place to start. Um, but technically a client can ask for kind of as many as 
they want if that makes sense but i would always start with five because sometimes especially if a comp like let's say for example someone was coming to me with base and it hadn't really been um launched before people might necessarily know what they want straight away um and it's something they might have to work on they might come back to you maybe in a few months um looking for more so i just kind of always start with five so here what i've just done is i've pasted over um the type system that we created yesterday i edited it ever so slightly when i went back to it so what i've kind of done is i have the header one the header two i changed um i'm just gonna on oh sometimes when it's on, i'm just gonna ungroup it because when you paste it over sometimes it can be all um grouped together so header one is kansas new regular Oh, header two sorry and um, header one i think is sorry is hydrophilia iced and then this was the ict avic Gar gothic pro and it was in book so the lighter version and then i also included the medium version as well um, just if we're using colour and colour, it gives it a little bit more contrast. And then our call to action is the same as the body copy, only it's in bold. So that's really kind of nice. what we're going to be working on. You can see here how the Kansas has been used as well as the rest. And like, like I said yesterday, um, I had a different, if we go into Illustrator, you can see I did start off with something that was quite basic and um different and as i began to put it on the cover um of the packaging i realized i wanted to change things about um a little so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to paste this over so this is basically introducing um the new brand so i'll do the kind of tagline Start where it matters and kind of just play around with sizing with kind of how I'm going to format it so I'm just gonna first of all Kansas regular and maybe and one of the great things about CC libraries is you can even add your font styles into your libraries as well and use it the same way you do yeah. colors. I'm, I'm really bad <laughs> at doing, I don't know why I'm like, I hardly ever um, do that, but I, it is, it's such a good thing to do, especially when you're like me and I'm like trying to fiddle around with it. Um, yeah, I love doing it specifically with Adobe XD because mm -hmm. Um, you don't have to rem remember the fonts that you were yeah. using and you can just like apply it um, without having to search through. So that's where I use it the most. So I'm just piercing in as well some of these stickers mm, um, that. that we created yesterday just to kind of help um, give that kind of branded element. And it might be a case of just playing around a little. So I'm just going to copy and paste them all over. Also, if anyone has any questions about anything, I'm more than happy um, to answer whilst I'm doing this. Um, just have to. Sometimes that's the tricky thing about it is getting them all kind of separate when you paste them over. So I think it'd be better to just paste them individually for now so i think this could work quite well kind of showcasing what it is and kind of really embedding that kind of personality aspect to it i think it would be a good idea to have base as well in some format maybe bringing over the logo because we know that on the packaging, it doesn't actually say 
face anywhere and if we're thinking about an audience is being exposed to it for the first time we want it to be recognizable like that yeah i love how you're thinking about the the audience and when they would be seeing this and how familiar they might be with the brand because then you can kind of tune your your yeah, templates and it's, to yeah that. it's it's really important as well it is just a matter of kind of playing around with it and kind of figuring out I also have which I might bring over is some stock imagery as well which could really help um kind of bring it to life so these are really nice kind of futuristic kind of imagery Ooh. and where do you get your stock imagery from so there's a what i got this anyway was a website called death to stock so really you the the creators get paid basically you do pay um kind of a monthly fee for but um all the photographers get paid also unsplashed as well but with unsplashed i feel like you have to kind of dig around um it's not always the nicest stuff is really obvious if that makes sense mm -hmm. but i weirdly kind of like prizing it just randomly um so sometimes having a photo in the background can really kind of add a new kind of dimension to it and then changing this maybe it's really too. cool it looks like it's floating and i guess that also kind of ties in with the kind of futuristic element of it yeah and while you're working on it we have a question about what led you to the decision to use XD for this part of the process? Like why XD for creating social media templates? Um, I actually, I think because it can be so simplistic. First of all, um, it's a lot of the time thinking about the client, but in terms of this, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming to have Illustrator there all the time. And sometimes it's nice to just go into something a bit simpler. Also, the icons and stuff that you get um, with XD can be really helpful when doing kind of social media. It's more intuitive um, to social, I feel, and that can be really beneficial. Even the basic things like the sizing of your artboards, which obviously you can do as well in Illustrator, but you just kind of need to memorize and which I think probably most designers do know at this point like mm -hmm. the size and I feel like it's ingrained in our brains at this point yeah I use it for my clients as well and they find it so much easier to use than mm -hmm. illustrator because you know there's only like 10 <laughs> tools to choose from in yeah. xd versus <laughs> like the millions in illustrator um and I I also like it because you can buy the the standalone subscription for I think like ten dollars a yeah. month, um, so you don't need Creative Cloud. Yep, it's far more accessible. And if you think about it in the sense of, you think about the first time you opened Illustrator, you were probably like, "How will I ever?" Like I know for me, I was like, "I will never be able mm -hmm. um, to use this." So if someone is not maybe. Um, a designer or, or like they just it's okay that they don't want to learn it they just want things to be simple um it's such a good option totally agree so there's one kind of showing the product with some of the little stickers and now we're gonna do it's gonna move this over here and do a carousel post. Just moving that up. So 
so with the carousel post like i mentioned yesterday to show an example of kind of the hierarchy of typography so kind of how where things go where what i'm going to do is going to add some text here and write the benefits oh. the benefits of SPF. I'll obviously change, let's put it into black for now. And then I can change that after. So gonna put this in header two. So that is the Kansas type, like that. And then obviously making sure that it kind of fills the space. Because when you're thinking about on social media and someone's scrolling down, you want it to kind of scream in their face in the nicest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes I also play with kind of the line height. I kind of, I do like kind of a tight line height, but when I'm doing it for clients, I, ha I do have to be a bit more mindful. Um, things can maybe go a little bit wrong when they're doing that themselves, if they also have to kind of play around um, with line height, if that makes sense. So let's try some color just to see what that could look like and like I mentioned yesterday if something is really clashing you can add the little black outline so I'm just gonna see what it's like without it to see yeah so that it just kind of makes it stand out um a little better and what I will do is I will get the brand name. Also slot that somewhere. Could look good there. And then I'm going to also do an arrow because it's going to be a carousel post like that. And sometimes if you aren't using a color, the line has to be a little thicker than maybe you usually might go for. And then I'm just going to create an arrow head by um, drawing a uh, triangle, sorry, like that. And then changing around the kind of arrow and doing that and then it's just a matter of kind of resizing it and then I usually would group that together um for clients so it's not kind of confusing or when they move it they're like what has happened because that's the worst thing and then as well they might come back to you um when it's not really that big of a deal but I can get how if you're a client it might seem a bit like what have I done I'm gonna mm -hmm. mess this up So I think I might try as well, creating maybe a border with the arrow to see what that might look Ooh, like. That's creative. And we have lots of good questions coming in. So one, have you used Creative Cloud Express yet? No, I have so not. I recently tried it out. It's awesome. It's like you have creative cloud in your phone, mm -hmm. like on the go. And oh. so you can create graphics, like you have the Adobe font suite um, oh. and you have like lots of graphic capabilities. There's a, there's video editing inside. So if you're trying to create similar Instagram graphics on the go, mm -hmm. you can use Express on your phone. Oh. So I would definitely recommend everyone to check it out when you get a chance. And Val asks, what do you do when working with a client 
that you clash with they're like you do not <laughs> agree <laughs> with what they want or maybe yeah maybe they're asking for something that you don't think is best for their business I think the best thing is to be kind of transparent or kindly kind of explain why you think it's not a great idea at the end of the day um the client is coming to you because you're the expert um and you would hope that they would kind of be respectful of that but I think having a bit of sharing context or even saying to them like this is kind of why I don't feel it's best or even show them what they I know it can take extra time but even showing them what they if it gets to a point where it is really difficult showing them um what they want and sometimes they come back and was like, like yeah that actually doesn't work <laughs> um which is quite it is it's annoying for like the designer but sometimes you do have to show someone for them to be like to let it go if that makes sense otherwise people like will keep going back to it but I think just explaining your reasoning giving context things like that I think always help what, do, what about you, Lola? Totally agree. I think the show them what they want method can actually be yeah. <laughs> quite effective. I usually also, if it seems like I'm not understanding why they want something, I will ask them to, to say more and like, can they connect it back to the strategy mm -hmm. we've created? And usually like, if they're like, okay, actually, when I think about the strategy, it doesn't really make sense. They kind of come to their own conclusions mm -hmm. about stuff. Um, but have you ever had kind of like a, a nightmare client that just did not respond well to your, to your methods of communication? It was like a mess. <laughs> so far, I've been really lucky that it hasn't happened. I know that there's still room for that to happen, but so far I've actually been really lucky, um, that it hasn't, has it ever happened to you? A little, I've been lucky to not have like a whole lot of miscommunications. Like they were always resolved. Um, so like not, not too many like nightmare <laughs> clients where we had yeah. to cancel the project or anything yeah. like that. It will usually just one, like they might, the client might be a little bit impatient um, mm -hmm. and they, they are working on like a different de deadline um, yeah. or we just have people who are, Sometimes you have clients who are kind of still coming into the process, not fully knowing what they want. And so as mm -hmm. they see the designs, they realize it and then it kind of causes a lot more revisions. So those are the two main things, I think. Yeah, sometimes people just need it explained. Like they're not consciously trying to be um, nasty. They just maybe don't understand. So I think that's where it's important to always have that kind of um context to help them totally so what agree. i've just completely so what i've just done here is just added some placeholder text and i've actually done that by uh adobe xd plugin which is another reason why xd is really good you basically can buy plugins there's free ones um and i have this one i think it's just called lorem ipsum and it's where you can just if i'm given um templates to um a client I won't add in their um text I'll just add in kind of a base so they kind of know where um they stand and then they can add in their own stuff themselves awesome plugin. I use it all the time and yes. the, I saw you had the icons for design plugin mm -hmm. that one is super helpful yeah. for um like UI icons, yeah, like if you're completely. doing website design, you have like a little search or a cart. Love using that plugin and they're free. Yeah, which is so good. And because in the past I've tried to create them myself, you know, like and creating icons can actually, they're so small, but can take up so much time. Mm -hmm. Like that. And then just in for color like that and maybe we could try 
some of the stickers just to see what it looks like. So let's see what this would look like. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like that one. Or maybe if we created some of the shape. So you can create um, some basics. So if I get this triangle and give it seven sides and then click here, I can drag that in as well to kind of make Ooh, nice. star shapes as well. So I can just have that maybe dotted around to see where it could work and what I really a feature I really like in XD is the background blur and it's just under it is object blur that kind of gives kind of a blurred kind of effect which I that is so cool. Like. I did not thought to use object blur like that. Oh, I, I love it so much. That's awesome. And you can kind of create um when it was when you had the object blur turned all the way up, it kind of looked like the the spotted gradient yeah. effect. And you can create maybe your own your own gradients in XD as well. Love it. Yeah. Val says only three nightmare clients in 12 years, but those nightmare clients were <laughs> good lessons. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, the benefit, I guess, from um, at the time, you're like, I just want this to end. It's so horrible, but you do learn so much. Yeah. Or maybe a client that isn't as kind or you're like, maybe I should have could have done better in this kind of way. Like I often like to write like after a project I write down maybe what didn't go great and maybe what I didn't do I could have done better um and also what then I'm going to implement into my process to kind of it doesn't mean that it's foolproof but to try and make it not happen um again yeah I totally agree I think it goes back to what you were saying that usually there are not really nightmare clients but maybe like a bad process or like miscommunication yeah. in the process that you can always improve. So they are usually more kind of lessons that, that show you how you can improve your business and client process more so than clients who are like really trying to be <laughs> terrible. <people>. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time they have the same goals. They want to have beautiful branding and work. So you're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Completely. So I'm just going to get some more of this imagery because it is so um, nice to work with. So there's, I might pull up this eye one. And for those who are just joining, Shinead is in Adobe XD. We are currently working on creating a couple of social media templates that her client would be able to use um, to create graphics over and over again. And so we like XD because it's really easy for our clients to use and create their own graphics later on. So Shinny is just laying out the base themes and layouts that her client can then use um, to create their own graphics. So she's laying some images down, playing around with the typography we created in the last episode um, and some of the other branding elements. And another question, I think I saw one about, oh, where does your inspiration come from? Um, so many things I would say. I love magazines. Like I think magazines have such amazing layouts and typography. Like I could just, I literally buy magazines to look through them. Like I don't even read them. I don't have to be interested <laughs> in the topic. I'm just like, I love the layouts, things like that. I just really enjoy. I'll, I also love, I love photography as well. Um, other creatives too can be 
really inspiring like if I see a creative doing really well that I really like um it kind of gives me a drive mm -hmm. which can be hard to kind of get when you work for yourself it's hard to kind of push yourself so when you see someone else doing well it kind of is like well I could be in that position too I just need to kind of work for it what about you hmm that's a good question definitely other creatives and I like to look outside of the direct like brand design community yeah. so like also yes photographers love looking at type creators um mm -hmm. so like let I can't remember what the name is for people who create letters um things like that I do really like magazines I'm actually wondering do you subscribe to any magazines or publications um I love brick magazine Ooh. also I'm not sure if I'm saying it right but Gossamer um Ooh, okay. I love it it's like one of my favorites um check those out for inspiration you guys they're so lovely just the color everything is so nice so i'm just going back in to the plugins to get some place holder text and all i do to do that is create a shear and then go in to the plugins um fill with placeholder and then it will um insert it and then I usually take a lot of it away because I am going to increase the size of the typography. So this is the quote post. And I'm using header two that we created yesterday. So kind of given that futuristic element to it oh amazing and do you have any social media tips for people who want to create their own designs or like even just show up on social media what is your how do you use social media in your business? Well, I'm I'm the worst person to come to for when it comes to Same. showing off because I'm not I'm not good at doing that. Like it scared like the thought of like talking and stuff on Instagram. I don't know why, but I have like this thing in my head. I'm like, oh, I can't. I always sometimes I get days where I'm like, I'm gonna do it today, and then I like back out of it. But I think you have to just be comfortable with what is right for you there is a lot of noise um on social media and sometimes you feel like you need to be doing something that actually you don't really um want to do I love seeing other people on stories but I just cringe at the thought of myself being on it um in terms of the designing for I think it's just important to think about what are you going what do you want people to get out of it so like is it information sometimes it's also beneficial um to maybe outsource to um someone like a social media expert or um a marketer because a lot of the time people think sometimes that graphic designers kind of um do it all when actually a lot of my clients come to me after they've mm -hmm. worked with a marketer who might give them like um kind of topics or p content pillars and then they feel more um confident of kind of making changes and that's when they will come to me to do kind of the branding aspect of it um but I think kind of figuring that out first or you can just kind of for me like a lot of the time I'm quite intuitive so I think I, do, I think a lot about what my audience might enjoy. Um, sometimes it's stuff that I like as well. Um, so I just think not to think too deeply about it. And sometimes I just create because I feel like it's probably like the worst thing to say, <laughs> but there's no, I think, and also not worry too much. Like I used to be quite obsessed with like my follower count. And then I realized like this, but what like this actually, like I think at the start it's probably, 
it, it does help when you're first starting out to have kind of a presence or people that are um, listening to you. But at the end of the day, as you grow and get a reputation, the numbers don't really matter as much, in my opinion, anyway. Nice. And so what have you just done here? I saw you added some. So this is just stars. the quote post. So we use some of the stars that is kind of becoming an, a symbol, I would say, for um, the base brand because we have it if we here we've got it here to kind of shout out some of the key um, ingredients and then I've just used it as a shape for um, the coat post and that obviously gives a bit of variation so if you can imagine this on a fade um, there's kind of different things to look at all the time I might just try a different image on the back here just to see I really like the one with the blue in the back or maybe even the orange just to see what it might look like yeah I think I rather that one I think that's it contrasts really nice I think with the skin tone and the hair color as well like that and our next one is a testimonial. So this will be quite similar probably to um, the quote. Oh, so I'm just going to get rid of some of these little assets. Like that. Did you learn for Adobe XD, did you learn how to create social media templates on it first or did you start with like website design? Um, I would say for me it was social media um, templates before uh, the web design. So. How did you figure out that you could use XD for socials? Because I kind of randomly realized I was like, this is... <laughs> this is fire for yeah. <laughs> social media templates I put like a little IGTV on it like two hmm. years ago and it got so many like views oh, um, really? and I'm starting to see like a lot more people use it as well like as yeah. an alternative to Canva so I'm curious like how you um learned to use I XD think I, I think I just so when something I probably heard it from someone else I'd imagine on social media and then I probably just went in and kind of played around with it um, and thought that this would actually work really well. And at the time that I was using it as well, um, it was free, I think. Um, so it just kind of seemed like a good idea as well. And sometimes I find like obviously other platforms for building um, kind of templates can be really beneficial and I get why they exist but as a designer who's building it sometimes I can find them a little limiting mm -hmm. um whereas I think what Adobe does so well especially Adobe XD is it's simple but you still have creative freedom as a designer I think a lot of the time some of the other ones that are created on other platforms can feel a bit too tempting template -y. I know it's mm -hmm. probably not a word but like you're like I have seen that on like three other people's um social medias and it's not really differentiating especially when social media is so loud um no I think it's important to have kind of stuff that stands out especially like for example this we're aiming it at gen z so they don't like gen z don't have time like they have a short tension span <laughs> So I'd say that's yes. probably how I, I just kind of try it in error, I would say. Yeah, me too, and pretty here. much the same. And there are also, I was actually just in XD yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot that has been added to it. Like for one, you can now have videos in XD. I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So I've had like a lot of clients asking about um, when they want to do video content or GIFs and things like that. And you can now add those and save, oh. the, save the graphics. Yeah. The other thing I really like, this is more on the website mm -hmm. piece, but you can now add external links when you go into prototype. So if you have oh, a website okay. and you want to link out to um, 
say like a piece of press that uh -huh. the company got, you can actually add that external link. And when you send the live preview, it will actually link out, which is really exciting because you can make even more, um, even more accurate prototypes for your, your clients. And then it's more interactive and they can yes. visualize it a bit better. So we're just doing the testimonial. Um, I'm gonna, so if you can imagine someone's already used the product. Do you, and this is from Val, do you feel mm -hmm. like social media puts negative pressure on your creative voice? Um, probably yes and no. I like, I have a lot to thank social media for in the sense of I was able to start um, a business in a pandemic, also really um, rurally as well. Like I'm not, I'm not in a big, especially in lockdown, like I wasn't in everyone was at home I guess but like I'm not in a big city where there's a lot of networking events so social media has done a lot for me but I can completely see how there is maybe a pressure or you feel a need maybe to create certain things because mm -hmm. other people um are doing it so I think there's probably a pressure in a way what what about you what do you find it, I think it can be really easy to um accidentally like start trying to like start feeling pressure to create a certain way um especially if you're like not careful or intentional about how you engage with social media um so i try to be careful like when i'm scrolling through and looking at stuff whether or not i'm like oh, okay i'm supporting a fellow designer or this inspiration or whatever to make sure i'm clear on like what is my personal creative style mm -hmm. and then what um what I'm taking inspiration from. But I think as far as whether it's like negatively impacted my creative voice, I feel similarly in that I think it's only improved my style and exposed me to other design styles that I wouldn't get just from like where I live and um, yeah. who's there. So and the community I really like as it. well, I think yes. it's so nice. Like I, I've been on like maybe TikTok and things and I haven't been on a, a TikTok a lot so I can't like uh, make loads of comments but sometimes I find that I don't get that same kind of community and there's certain people that um, you talk to regularly as well which helps. So what I'm doing is I've just selected all them and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export them um, as JPEGs and then I usually bring them back in just because um, when I'm resizing it and stuff it can get a bit annoying it's probably the roundabout way um, of doing it but I just it's just the way I like it so what I do is I select them and then I go to file export and selected so that will only export um, the things that I have selected obviously I'm just going to see if it's a JPEG you can see it as a PNG SVG and also a PDF and so I'm this gonna... is to be able to like include it in your your presentation yeah right mm -hmm. and we yeah. actually this is a good time to ask so when um someone asked how you actually share the the social media templates with your clients so they can edit it okay so i would maybe just send the file directly or what you can also do is up here you can click share um and that basically lets you um, it can be for a review so you can send it and they're able to put comments on exact places if you're building a website you can also send it for a developer so it's easy for them then to develop presentation user testing for prototypes or custom as well but and then you can just create a link and send it but a lot of the time I just send um, the direct file but there's also that option as well which is really helpful or if they have an Adobe account, you can add them as well, um, which is you just have to put in their email and they can then jump straight into it, which is really handy as well. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring, so the first thing that we would do in the presentation is kind of insert some of the main logos, so the logos that we created yesterday. So I'll only bring in 
a few of these just to kind of demonstrate the core of the brand like that and I might change the color of it as well and usually a dark and light contrast is the best for when you're just showcasing like that and then the big B that's on the packaging and change the color of that too and then I like to line them up in whatever way oh looks the best kind of illustrate the brand I'll just go with that and when you're illustrating this kind of element it doesn't have to be like really fancy this is just kind of showing the core of it and then what I might do is I might pull up one of these images put that as a background and then place one of the logos on top I think imagery is so important when it comes to showcasing yes. it just it's so simple but it completely transforms if you look at this with just a plain background and let's say for example I paste this over and change the color for example the red it just really from what I think anyway really um helps it tell because the aim here is we want it to tell a story or to make it come alive rather than if we think about what our illustrator board looks like it's kind of all over the place this just kind of adds an element um of this more visualization basically so i totally agree that's why i like to include mock-ups and imagery and things in the presentation because sometimes clients they just don't know what they're looking at if they just mm -hmm. see like the logo on a, a blank screen like it's important to show it but um mock-ups are also helpful to, to show like real life situations where the brand will actually show up and then mm -hmm. they can decide if that feels strategic from there mm -hmm. so i love that and yeah imagery is i feel like imagery is actually kind of like 40 to 60 yeah. percent of, <laughs> of a brand because you just get so much you get you know the color palette in there and the energy of the brand and everything so definitely if there was one piece that i'd include in your client presentations it's an idea of what your your brand's photography or imagery might look like as well and there is so many nice stock imagery out there now that you can use and access for free. You don't even have to mm -hmm. um, pay for it. So what I'm just doing here is displaying um, the color palette in kind of a fun kind of way, which gives you all of the information, but also kind of looks graphically um, more interesting because you want them to look at it and be like, yes this and sometimes these small kind of touches can really help with that so like that the purple and then if i was doing this in um for example if this was their brand guidelines i would also add in all their kind of hex codes the rgb um, CMYK and things like that. And then we have our typography. So what we created yesterday, and I might just change this to the brand, some of the brand colors. So it doesn't seem like a big thing, um, but it just really helps when they're looking at everything else. It can just really help it kind of come to life and think how this can all kind of work cohesively together. Totally. Kind of want to make them feel like they're looking at the brand and not just a bunch mm -hmm. of individual assets or designs. So like whenever you can put everything together, it's super helpful. So I love how you're applying the colors. And 
You guys are asking amazing questions. Okay, <laughs> another one coming at you. So what are your favorite kinds of brands to work with? Um, obviously I love like Gen Z brands, millennial brands, lifestyle. I love service brands as well, probably because I'm also a service brand. It's something I probably natively can relate to the most. Um, uh, like just like skincare. I just love anything kind of lifestyle. Like I'm not really into like tacky or things like that. I just, I really love any brand that kind of wants to look a bit different. I'm kind of happy to um, work with. What about you? Pretty much the same. I like to, I don't have like a particular niche as far as industry, um, mm -hmm. but I like to work with, I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday too, but I really like working with clients who feel like they are doing something like disruptive in the industry or mm -hmm. are kind of like game changers and have big ideas. But some of my favorite projects I've worked on, I think have been in the lifestyle, fashion, yeah. And then one of my most favorite is like actually a hair salon. So because it's just such a big kind of brand, there's interior design, there mm -hmm. is um, all of the little like pieces that you can give to clients. There's the website. So I like when there's opportunities to create super immersive experiences yeah. with a lot of different touch points. Completely. I think a fashion brand would be fun because I think the photography would just be so yes. nice. Totally. What, are there any other, are, is there any like kind of dream company or like brand that you have on your, your list that you want to work with? I don't, to be honest, I don't, I don't really ever, it's not that I don't think about it, but sometimes when a brand is so established, it can be, I kind of like working with brands that are kind of just starting out, if you know what I mean. I do, mm -hmm. like even if a uh, Glossier had like a massive, rebrand I think that would kind of be quite cool the thing because they're kind of the ground leaders kind of of like a millennial um brands it'd be cool to see how what they would do next if that makes sense because they were so revolutionary I think that could be quite interesting and also I'd love to make the sticker sheets <laughs> <laughs> totally agree yeah I think I would love to work on generally like a cafe or a like e eating space mm -hmm. probably would be really fun. So it'd be cool to be able to go in and actually see your stuff in yes. real life. I think that would be cool because I've never really had that. So I'm just creating kind of a simple kind of mock-up just using shapes to create um an iPhone um obviously it's not to size or anything like that but sometimes it can be nice to kind of use that as well as maybe some real mock-ups in Photoshop too just to kind of demonstrate so I'm just trying to see does this work fit in okay or what I can even do is I can copy the shape and it obviously won't be perfect, but it's just to kind of visualize. Make it to size like that and then copy them both and then press mask with shape. And what that basically will do is take the top shape um, and basically put that inside it, if that makes sense. Awesome. Ooh, can I show you another hack? Yeah. Okay. So if you, if you command Z on it, there's also something called paste appearance. Oh. So if you want it to, if you want it to take your, your iPhone mock-up and fit it in the rectangle you have over on the left without having to mask shape, you can do that. So if you, you can remove like the white part or just grab the just grab the iPhone mock-up part yeah yeah that one and then like cop like press command c to copy it or you can do copy on the yeah. card, and then go over to your iPhone 
your illustration over to the left. Yep, click on that and then right click and do paste appearance. I think that should work. And then oh, you can like drop it in. Okay. So it's one way if you like wanted to um, keep the shape that you had originally mm -hmm. created or you can do the mask with shape, which is also an awesome Oh, tool. that's actually so handy. And where, so where did you get your, your iPhone mock-up? Um, I usually just search for it. Creative market. Same. Um, I, I literally just Google search it. Like it's not something. Um, there's also places called the templates, mock-up mason. Um, a few that I just go to all the time. Um, for kind of mock-ups but a lot of the time just googling it will get you what you need yeah <laughs> most of the in time. my opinion <laughs> i think i got my my iphone mock-ups and things from a place called like unblast because they had ones that were like you could download an adobe xd file and they were editable i think oh. that was the name of it it was pretty creative also yellow images is really good for um product mock-ups like them ones i got for yesterday so these here there is so many shapes usually if i was ever doing um a product it can be sometimes a bit tricky to find exactly um what you need but they literally have everything Ooh. They're really good. I'm gonna check that out. Like that. And another question. So if you, if your client like didn't have imagery that you can use, do mm -hmm. you usually use stock imagery or do you like go with no images? A stock imagery. I even use, I use stock imagery for my own business. So um, I think it's a good way to add a little breakup of not having all the time like loads of graphics although there's anything wrong with that i just personally like to have a little bit of differentiation i find mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is bring back in these images and all i do is i drag them in like that And I'm going to do a little circle up here for the logo. Um, usually I would probably, if I'm doing final stuff, I might just do it all in Photoshop. But it can be, it is very time consuming and this can be a little bit easier sometimes I find. Let's see. You can play about with it. Sometimes I do a mock up and save it. And then after I'm like, actually. Or really valuable things that you'd want to include. And that's a question from Val. Um, so I guess the practical things as well. So making sure that the client knows after viewing the presentation, what do they, what action do they need to take? Um, so I'd always mention kind of when they need to have um, their things back by, how do they provide their feedback. Um, obviously, each brand is going to have different things in their presentation. So, for example, because we're doing a beauty brand, it might be social media because it's for Gen Z. And um, if we have another brand, actually, they might have in life posters, maybe let's say the building is being built. They might have posters um, on, on the street outside the building site. Sometimes you see that. Um, so it's just kind of intuitively including things that works for the brand. Each one is kind of individual. Um, you can put little explanations as well of reasoning. I like to just record myself um, over like I will save the PDF and then record my voice explaining mm -hmm. it. I just find it mm -hmm. saves me so much more time than typing any it all out. Because I find for me anyway, 
my clients maybe don't necessarily read will read paragraphs and paragraphs of information sometimes it's nicer just to hear it coming from a person instead if that makes sense yes I love that so if you have ever been like scared to do a client presentation and have to like have all these long writings um, or like paragraphs you can totally do a a video walkthrough instead if you're like better with um, speaking than than writing that's totally an option clients really appreciate it as well Mm -hmm. and I think it also helps with um feedback like I some in when I first started I would just send like a pdf and they might be they might want revisions on something um and in my head I knew that that's what was going to happen anyway but <laughs> like they, they don't they don't know that and you have to appreciate that um so always provided in context I think and also next steps and then intuitively thinking what would this be brand be showcasing so I've created that so what I'm going to do is just add in some of the stock imagery and contrast it with some of the graphics because there probably will be a lot of imagery in this as well maybe just showcasing some of the models And to, the great thing about XD is you can just create a shape and then drag it into it. You don't need to um, worry about um, an illustrator. You kind of have to place it. It's so good that way. That is hands down my favorite part. Yeah, me XD. too. <laughs> and that's why it's also really good for clients because they don't, you don't, like I would record um some tutorials for clients um and it makes it so much easier as well when I'm explaining to them what they need to do I'm just like you just drag and drop it rather than be like you have to click this and then do this and then mask the shape it just makes it so much more complicated yes agreed looking good Paloma says looking really good and you're making it look very easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe this nice shiny one. These images have really nice texture, I think. Yeah. Can you guys see how much the imagery just like adds to yeah. the overall experience? If, if it's so one thing lovely. you could take from this. <laughs> it's just like news imagery like it's so it helps so much and also I think it creates a really nice um contrast as well I'm just going to I think I'm going to change the center one to one of these I think one of these deserves it a bit more um Oh, maybe that. It's just a matter of playing around, really. That one, I think. Ooh, that's the center. That looks really cool. Yeah. Like that. It's going to make that a little bit more rounded. And I might even just have that as an outline and place that on here like that like that and then what I will do is I'll pull in some of these bigger ones just to showcase what some of the big what it can look like bigger because obviously it's quite small I think it is beneficial to see what their feed could potentially look like. But it's also important, I think, to highlight some of these in a bigger format. So I'm just going to drag in what I'm going to do for suppose copy that over so they're the same size. And I don't need to try and make them the same size when I'm dragging it in like that. 
So what I might add to this is to make it look more like a post. So I'm gonna add a little box at the top like that. And I'm gonna round off the top edges. So I just hold down my shift key and press. I'm gonna change the color because you can't really see. And then even find details like this, even though Instagram is never gonna be this color, it just helps in the document to keep everything kind of grounded. Like that. And the same on the bottom. Just make that a little shorter. And then what I will do is I will copy over this logo and paste it here. So you can see it kind of, obviously it's not exact because it's not a real mock-up, but for me, I find some of these kind of funner. I kind of, I weirdly like building them out as well. Um, it helps it keep it really on brand and you can see instantly how that kind of elevates the post yeah. more so than just it's singly sometimes I will do it singly as well um but sometimes it's nice to do that um too so I'll just add a little bit of text so at BS beauty oh I love the at symbol in this font yeah so do I noticed that too wow and here like that and underneath it it could be a location so london for example we could do that in another one of the branded types so you can see sometimes it can really help to maybe create your own um, kind of mock-ups and they don't have to be like complicated, it just kind of elevates it a little and really I think helps tell that story. And then what I will do is I will go to the plugins and go into the icons and just search for a heart like that. And the good thing is you can change the color to them as well. Cause sometimes you get icons, you can't. So that's what's really good about XD. You can even add them as little assets as well. Like that. So if you're imagining a post would have like mm -hmm. a comment. Like that. Um, maybe a speech. Maybe like comment. Comment. And Fergie says, there is no way you could ignore this brand. It's very <laughs> there. Definitely the EM anyway. <laughs> love it. Love the, the color pairings. Super nice. The overall bold personality is coming through. I actually love social media templates because it's where you can like see the brand fully yeah. come together sometimes when I'm designing individual assets, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how this is going to yeah. work. <laughs> and then you put it together and you're like, okay, I'm glad I trusted or, the process. Yeah. Or it might work on something. Like it might work on the packaging. And then when you go do the social template, like this doesn't, this isn't yeah. working. That's why I'm always like, I will never confirm something instantly. I'll have an idea, but then 
when I'm building it out and I think something else works I don't mind going and changing it like I'm not going to restrict myself totally I've definitely made some like last minute changes like putting together the final presentation and I'm like making a mock-up and I decide to change something because I see how it looks yeah on (laughs) an actual mock-up and I'm like yeah no we're changing (laughs) so I say nothing is ever confirmed until the presentation is finally sent out but Val asks what are your favorite XD plugins and why so we talked a little bit about um, so I do I yeah I don't have a lot of plugins it's kind of the lower ipsum and the icons I also have toggle track if I'm ever tracking my time which I don't do a lot but if I ever need to like let's say a project is running um over I will track my time them's kind of the three main ones I often like for sometimes forget that even is there (laughs) but I definitely should check it out because I know there is loads of really good ones what about you Lola what's I yeah I have like the exact same (laughs) plugins (laughs) as you um there's another one that I actually probably am going to download but I forgot the name but you can essentially I think it's called maybe like UI faces or something and if you need stock photos of people's faces like say for your website prototype or something it will actually give you stock photos of people to use like for user profiles and things you can drag them directly so that can make things easier if you're just trying to create placeholder um placeholder like layouts and things so that might be one I add but definitely lorem ipsum and icons I use in every project Mm -hmm. um and then toggle track if I have I'm doing like an hourly um rate project and I need to time myself then I'll use that as well completely it's something I probably don't use as much as I should like there's a lot I could probably get take from it yeah xd like on its own is just really it does (laughs) everything I need (laughs) I haven't I haven't used plugins too much but so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe create some posters as well just to add kind of um, to help the client see what it could also look like on other um, kind of assets. So you could also do um, a mock-up for this as well. But sometimes when you get to the stage where you have to present to a client or you've got a really tight deadline, it can just be easier to do it kind of like this yourself. Or if you're just experimenting or you think that things might change. So that's just the foundation of it. And then I will take this out. And what mock-up did you say you were creating for this one? So this is just kind of like a poster. So if you can imagine maybe, um, I know um, it's kind of out of fashion, but I do know that some brands still kind of put up posters maybe around cities things like that to kind of draw attention maybe to get them to download or check it out if you think of like a paper um poster or they even are it, totally making a comeback yeah I have completely. started seeing them more yes mm-hmm. and sometimes it's nice to just have something that is like physically out there rather than and it's also quite I think a lot of people take photos off it too. Mm-hmm. But like even thinking about that for our audience, because it's going to be, um, Jen said it could even be an, like a AR filter. QR codes have made a massive comeback. Yeah. <laughs> Just change in. And we have about 10 minutes until our artist spotlight I think Val put in the chat already but you can recommend yourself or another artist um in the just above the chat box there's a little tab where you can um recommend somebody or yourself I'm just creating a kind of square of where the image I will place the image and then if I was giving this to a client they can easily slot it in without disrupting the whole kind of template and everything is still really um aligned 
like that. So going back to some of the stock imagery. Maybe this one, because I haven't used it. And I might blow it up just ever so slightly to really focus on the face like that. So it doesn't have to be really like complicated. It can just be simple. It's just always about kind of demonstrating that story or just helping it come to life a little bit more than just showing like the color palette, the typography. Mm -hmm. This one is very like editorial mm -hmm. feeling, kind of looks like a magazine cover. Contrast. And we might actually create maybe a fun shape. So we have that kind of shape that we're seeing throughout the kind of brand the kind of star shape so that could look good with an image inside so with all the kind of shapes you create in xd you can just place um an image within it so let's get another image Might put in that one. So I think a lot of the time ears are actually the place where people forget to like put their SPF mm. or maybe their foundation. And just give it a nice contrast in order. Um and maybe have the base, or maybe we could take the sticker instead and see what that looks like. So you can see, even though it's a different asset, the same kind of elements are running through it and that will help um, its own ability and become recognizable over time as well. Like that, and maybe in the Kansas. People are loving these colors <laughs> and how the stock images just totally connect with the brand. I think when you start to do this is when people actually, um, you get more of a reaction because it is so hard when you're just seeing like a color palette, it just kind of, it's hard to know what to think if that makes sense. Yeah. And Laura asked, is the muscle font available on Adobe fonts? I think we got it from Adobe fonts yeah, yesterday, right? We did, yep. Yeah. It's available on Adobe fonts. Grab it while it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, we might use the darker, kind of playing a little bit more with because it is a fun brand, so we want it to be quite playful. Like that. And then... These are so fun. What we could do is add in the actual product as well to demonstrate it. So 
And so since everyone loves the stock photos <laughs> so much, can you give us any advice for how to find kind of the perfect photos for a project? Are there like keywords you like to put in for death to stock or what's the strategy for getting great so, images like this? The best thing about death to stop is they, the photographer will make a whole album um, based on, let's say it's about office. They'll have a whole album on that which is really helpful because then you have a whole library um, for basically creating. Sometimes it can be hard when there's one photograph you like and then trying to find something else that matches it. I would just think about, so for example, when I was looking for these imagery, I wanted something that, I knew I wanted quite a fun and out there brand. So that meant that the imagery also had to reflect that. Um, and it is, I think it is quite bold. It's quite editorial. Um, there's there's nothing quite there's nothing shame like kind of mellow about it and um with the traditional kind of SPF brands and makeup kind of brands are very corporate and boring and all the models a lot of the time are very fresh faced and when you for I knew for this I didn't want that so it's kind of no sometimes it can be easier to know what you don't want and then I literally just search I'll search maybe face makeup SPF um, and sometimes nothing great comes up and sometimes you get loads so it's just a matter of getting kind of key words that um, might help it's just kind of playing around search putting in keywords and um, death to stock is great because you can um, download whole albums that a photographer has made so everything kind of looks cohesive instantly but that's what I would do what do you find that works best for you yeah those are really great tips I pretty much do the same I think I and we talked about this a little bit last um, episode about doing kind of a brain dump of all the relevant mm -hmm. keywords I usually will bring those keywords into my search for images as well the other thing that helps is I'm always looking for images even when I'm not working on yeah, a me project <laughs> so I usually start with like my base of images that I already have um, and then I can go from there and so I also use like Stocksy which similarly you can look at the entire photo album from a particular photo shoot um, so I can find more similar issues so if I like come across an image that I like and it's bold, I'll put it in my bold folder. Um, and then I already have images to, to go off of. So always be looking for things that might potentially work for a future project. I weirdly enjoy it. Like I, I, I love it. <laughs> like so. These look so good. We have like two minutes until the artist spotlight. Perfect. I'm just putting an artboard over these because I want to um, export them as well so I can easily just place them into here. So file export, selected artboards. I'm really bad at saving everything to my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I go into my desktop, they should be there and it's just a matter of placing them in so I just repeat them like that and then you can kind of get a feel so good. As a client, I would be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is it. This is the one. Like, ah, uh, just move them up slightly. Like that. Amazing. All right. Why don't we head over to. Yeah our spotlight and I'd love for you to tell us who we have because I know you selected so I selected it's Lucy Jen 
and she is a designer and also an illustrator and I just love her illustrations I am in awe of like her brand work and also how she can create like for example like that out of vector vectors and stuff like I could never <laughs> <laughs> it's just so um interesting even all this I love these little kind of like ma- oh, like even uh, like imagine doing that like it just it, it honestly baffles me it's just all so pretty um really interesting to look at. I actually got her to create like this I love this like the imagery even the way she's used kind of her shapes as well and like stickers to me that is just so um appealing it's just such a lovely brand and and work she asked like look at this that packaging Uh, I'm just like yes if I saw that I don't care what it is I'm buying it (laughs) I love that I love how she's like bringing kind of the the graphic Mm-hmm. style to like real life things like I love that mac and cheese mm-hmm. um, illustration style going on and sometimes so you, it can be hard to find someone who's actually good at the branding aspect and the illustration and Lucy is so strong at both she actually created these for me for um a send out to clients so like little sticker sheets so when a client nice. signs up with me I send them out so she created them for me and I just you can see kind of what it looks like it's just so like pretty and then when we go on her website as well you can see like even her business card how she's done it like a nutrition fax like if someone handed me that like I would keep that just because it looks it looks nice and it's hired on the spot like (laughs) whatever you're offering I'm buying it (laughs) (laughs) like it's so clever and even the way she's done like a little I click into it a little um color so you can even see there she's done like uh kind of a juice bottle um see there like just even the colors like thinking about also I get like the juicy lucy and then the back is the nutrition facts I like, get so clever like it's so good but it's also so clever like it's so so, much. so so nice and even this, like these illustrations, I would love to be able to do <gasps> oh, that. That is so nice. Isn't it? I love it's it. so beautiful with the type as well. I just, I love things that contrast. So like you've got this like illustration with like a typography contrast. A burger. I don't know why, but I love illustrations of food. Yeah, so <laughs> and I think they look so <laughs> yummy. <laughs> just like that yes yeah beautiful like, even when I look at that like from a design perspective I'm like how are you doing like how are you doing that without like mm-hmm. getting stressed out and the lines are so clean yeah yeah oh my god it's amazing amazing work Lucy these cakes I just love the cakes and even the oh, way I love that patterns like can you imagine that on like tissue paper Mm -hmm. like it would just be so nice like I would keep that and this the gradient in this it's perfect with a little shine mark on the peach yay powerpuff girls (laughs) like that in itself like the castle is just so nice and when I work with Lucy even her like invoices had like little illustrations on them so I was like this is so nice I wish I could live in her illustrated world me too <laughs> I'd like to <laughs> jump inside it so this like I love stickers so this was for a company I think it was a period company um kind of like a subscription I think mm-hmm. of things like to help you when you're on your period I could be wrong with that but so it looks like this is her kind of logo portfolio yeah in the year like the type and it's just so lovely 
even her mood boards are so nice yeah this is amazing I'm like speechless it's gorgeous and as you're saying I think it's um it's really amazing when you have like a illustrator background but you can also create really beautiful logos and like the full brand because I definitely but like yeah it's so nice I definitely couldn't. I wish I could. <laughs> I am not <laughs> the strongest <laughs> illustrator. Con- probably quite controversial for some people. I actually don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't hate it because, like, when I learned about the reasoning behind it, I was like, that makes sense. And like, I guess the design is about solving um a problem. So, like, when I think of it in that way, I'm like, yeah, like. I don't hear it like I don't get no like I hear comics off it's not my like ultimate least favorite font for sure yeah. but now I'm trying to think what my least favorite font is something that I hate actually my least favorite is probably playlist script oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because it's been so used um yeah I think comic sans is like fine and I think it's gonna make a comeback yeah just because Gen Z designers are like, I'm just going to do what el- like everyone hates. So we're yeah. going to bring Comic Sans um, back. Like um, that guy on Instagram, I think it's called Elliot is a cool guy. Yes. He's always like ripping to shreds. Like <laughs> these things that graphic designers say, like I hate Comic Sans and he like uses it. So it's just really nice. I love these. Love the Lots of stars. beautiful use of type mm-hmm. and fonts gorgeous I really like that the G in that mm, yes That's so nice lovely yeah so it's really these little digital going to the digital one I think this is the last one so these are just web icons and social graphics so like I get so jealous. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just a deep sigh. <laughs> yeah. These are awesome. Ooh, these must be like kind her of filters, story. stickers. Yeah. yeah. See, I think these are her own personal ones. You can see them in her logo up here. Mm-hmm. They're so lovely as well. I love the little cherries. Those are adorable. I love those. Oh, oh we have yeah. animations. I think Lucy does make quite a few gifts, which are so nice. Well, especially with her illustrative style, they would work really well. Yeah. Um, little outlines. Some stories as well. The rug, so it's really nice to have the actual rug in the background. It's cool. Yeah, These are amazing. Yes, go check out lucygen.com and <laughs> it's Lucy Jen on Instagram and get you some Instagram story stickers. <laughs> Perfect. Highly recommend her. Yeah. All right. We have about 10-ish minutes left okay. of design. So I'm so excited to see the client presentation fully come together so far we have created um the main like showing the main assets and then now we've been kind of mocking things up so the client can see how it looks like on socials and maybe in um real life ads so we're gonna finish up the presentation here i'm just gonna add bs to the front cover I'm going to have it quite bold and in your face because the brand is very much has that kind of element to it. So just seeing what would look best. I think I'll go for that. So what we could also start to do is the actual just place in the actual product just to kind of showcase 
what that could potentially look like as well. Totally. One thing I like to do, even if maybe the, the client has only asked for the base brand design, I like to show mock-ups specifically of things that they might need because usually they'll Mm -hmm. see it and they're like, oh, actually, can you do my package design after this? Or (laughs) can you do my web design? So I give them like a little sneak peek of what they could have if they continued working with us. So it's a great way to to help the client um, see what they actually might even need with their their branding. And kind of show off your skills as well. And obviously Mm -hmm. upsells yourself too. So I might just put the tagline. Oh, just going to copy this over. And I'll add in the tagline. So really keeping in with the branded elements to really max out the possibilities of the brand. Because it's better to probably showcase it like fully at the start and then if they feel they want to kind of pull back with it, they can yeah and if you guys have any final questions for Shanid feel free to drop them in the chat playing around with the colors I think I want to go quite neutral because I don't want to take away um from product and I might include a shape I'll maybe hanging it off some of the words we've got this space so I kind of want to fill this it's not when it's we could do it like this but there's just uh, it's just not I, I wanted to fill the space a little more so I need to kind of fill here um in some capacity to kind of make it look less kind of empty or mm-hmm not right looking I'm just gonna pull some of these other ones down i'll pull some of these little stars we might just be using some of that just drag that in like that i could maybe have these dotted around and because they're blurred they're not um, taken away from anything yeah like you can still read the text and everything yeah. it's not too cluttered just getting all of the round colors and sometimes when you inc- decrease the size the blur gets um more intense so sometimes you just have to take it down ever so slightly dependent on the size of the shape you're working with maybe just one up here to give it a bit of balance Might do purple because it's the furthest away from the original one. I'm 
And if I did go back and felt that it was um, too busy, I might change. Like I'm initially kind of already thinking maybe um, it's pulling somebody's back or maybe adding something else in. I think for now, it's kind of fine. Or what sometimes I like to do is create a pattern with the product. So just get rid of that. And what I will do is I will resize these ever so slightly. And kind of put them at an angle. So put that there and see what angle it's at. So it's minus 33 and do the other one in that as well. And also make sure that they're of a similar kind of size. And I might even do that. And then copy. Paloma says she loves her a good pattern, and I agree. <laughs> Sometimes we just make something look a bit more um, interesting, I think. That looks amazing. And Miss Mackenzie Bird, hey, she says great work on hey, your Ken. project, Shanine. Looks awesome. Narita says looks amazing. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I follow Mackenzie. I've talked to her quite a few times. I know she's doing Adobe Live as well. I yeah, think she has one coming next up. Week. Mm -hmm, I think so. There's so much, I'm excited to watch all these. <laughs> Once I get mine out of the way, I can like relax and just watch them all. <laughs> I love watching them when I'm designing as well, like having it in the background. And you learn Me so too. much. I per I personally have learned a lot from them as well. Yes, I have learned so much from watching mm -hmm. Adobe Live. It's like what whenever people ask me, like, how can I get started with design? I'm like, just watch a ton of Adobe yeah. Lives <laughs> and you will definitely pick it up. Because they're like, well, I'm probably a bit geeky, like, but I find them fun. Like, I find them fun to watch. It's so fun to watch other people's processes because everyone yeah. does things differently. Um, like, even with Ill Illustrator, there are so many ways to like do the same thing. So it's fun to see like little hacks and things that people have for doing like really common design things. So super helpful. And the great thing about XD as well as all of this stuff outside the artboard will disappear once you um, click on it. Beautiful. So I'm going to see what, just to see, Ooh. it might pop it out a little more. So I think I quite like um, the brown. Or I'd love to know what people do they rather the lighter background. Or yeah, so quick, very quick poll. Do people prefer the brown or the white background for the pattern? So at this point, what I would probably do is I'd look over it. I might also add kind of another slide and what I would have so if I oh what I would have some are saying the lilac background oh okay Val and Fergie think that might look nice there we go and we have about five minutes left. Perfect. So I'll just explain what I will do last. So what would happen at this point? I just check over everything, um, make sure it included things that I felt were 
reflective of the brand. Um, I would include kind of, I would write up here next steps. So I can just add that in really quickly. And while you're adding that in, I'm gonna look at the comments. I think purple is winning. And Val, I think we're good on, we don't, I don't think we have to do a whole poll. It seems like people really like the purple. Yeah, it's really, it gives a nice contrast and keeps it really in brand as well. So I Ooh, do, okay. sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, we're gonna do a poll. <laughs> <It's okay, Val. laughs> So I would do next steps and within this, I would just explain, like make sure to read over or listen to the um, recording of the presentation and um, make sure to think about your audience when you're looking at it as well, rather than your personal preferences. Obviously you have to like it to a degree, but it's important that you're thinking primarily about your audience. Um, I will then tell them kind of the next steps within that. So I will usually include when they have to provide their feedback by. So it's usually for me, it would be 48 hours. And I would also highlight that as well. And then I would mention how if they don't reply within that time, a late feedback fee will be added. I very rarely do add that because most people are really good, but it's just to kind of make people aware that if they don't, they'll have a late feedback and also the timelines will change. And a lot mm -hmm. of the time clients don't want that to happen. So they will give their feedback. Um, but I also put in that if like that day really doesn't suit and you can't do it, like that's fine as long as I'm made aware and they are mindful that that delay will add. So like, let's say there's a delay of two days and I will add two days then onto the original kind of timeline um, and then I would export all that as a pdf and upload it to notion um, and await for their feedback and then their feedback I'd open it again and kind of iterate it to um, what looks best for them so if I go back to the start here I'll just quickly share kind of what it would look like if you were the client kind of viewing it so a really bold um kind of cover page kind of just showing the simplicity of um the logos showing it on some brand photography so you can really see the difference that that makes um you could also put it maybe on if you think about if you were buying it for the first time you might put it on a tote bag Mm -hmm. They might get a free tote bag with the logo on, the color palette, the kind of header, um, the more practical aspect. And then as you can see, the Instagram branding, and they can see what it would look like in a feed as well as singularly and blowing up. Then what it could look like as a poster or even if it was in a shop. So um some beauty kind of shops might have um a big poster when a new brand is launching potentially in their window to kind of draw um the audiences in kind of the showcase of a project the packaging with the tagline and some of the stars and then kind of a pattern of the packaging as well um, you could do this and alter you could put maybe one of the imagery in the background as well like we had done um, with the post Instagram post so it's just a matter of playing around there we can Amazing. see I want to be your client that <laughs> is beautiful um, and I will start wrapping up, but this was truly amazing. I learned so much, um, from you and, um, love this brand and love what you created. So thank you so much for sharing your, um, your work with us. Um, I want to say stick around for the XD creative challenge with Jesse right after this. And then 
Adobe Live will be back tomorrow. We'll actually be with our evangelist for a full day of master classes. And then it'll be followed by a new episode of Office Hours with Nick and Andrew. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. And thank you so much, Shanid, for um, taking us through this amazing experience. We had so much fun and truly wonderful work. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.